Good afternoon. I would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone for joining our How to File Your Sales Tax Return webinar. My name is Muisa Chasunka. I am from the Office of Tax Policy Analysis, and I will be today's speaker. Now I will provide you an overview of today's agenda. Today, I will start with a high-level overview of sales tax, highlighting your responsibilities as a sales tax vendor. I will be utilizing our website, www.tax.ny.gov, to demonstrate how we can use the website to answer many of your frequently asked questions about not only filing a sales tax return, but general sales tax questions. Then I will provide you with sales tax tips and information. In this next section, I will provide you with a high-level sales tax overview. When we issue you a sales tax certificate of authority, or some of you call it a C of A, we trust that you'll follow through on the responsibilities outlined in the New York State tax law and collect and remit state and local taxes in trust for New York State. If you don't, there can be serious consequences for you personally and for your business. So what are your sales tax fiduciary responsibilities? If you, in New York State, make taxable sales of tangible personal property, perform any taxable services, sell food or drink, receive amusement charges, or operate a motel or hotel, you must register for sales tax purposes and obtain a certificate of authority. Once you receive your sales tax certificate of authority, you must display it at your place of business. If you have more than one place of business, then you would have to display it in multiple locations. Keep adequate books and records related to your business activities as a person registered for sales tax purposes. For example, we must be able to verify such items as sales receipts, receipts subject to sales tax, and details of individual transactions. Truthfully account for sales. What does this mean for you? Examples include, you must be able to account for the amount paid, charged, or due on the sale or transaction, along with any subsequent return or credit information related to the sale or transaction. Make sure you account for the sales tax due, if any, on the sale or transaction a copy of any written sales slip, invoice, receipt, or other evidence of the price, amusement charge, or hotel or motel rent that you gave your customer. Keep a daily record of all cash, debit, and credit sales or other transactions. And for sales tax purposes in New York State, it's all about location, location, location. Make sure you know the location where the sale or other transaction was made, or if applicable, where the delivery was made. Now that you have documented and accounted for the tax, once you collect it, remit the taxes due on behalf of New York State. File accurate and complete returns on time. If you hear from us, it doesn't mean you're in trouble. Don't ignore correspondence from us. Answer questions and comply with requests for information. So what do we expect from you when you have a certificate of authority? You must file a return. Even if you did not have any business activity and you did not collect any sales tax, this is the number one reason people give for why they didn't file their sales tax return. As you can see here, even if you did not have business activity or collect any sales tax, you still must file. Returns must be filed on time and paid in full. Failure to comply can result in interest and penalties. Who files quarterly? You do because you're a new vendor. Additionally, vendors with sales tax collected over 3,000 and vendors with taxable sales under 300,000 file quarterly. And what form do you use as a quarterly filer? You would use the ST100. Your return is due 20 days after the end of the filing period. This is also known as the liability period, unless the 20th falls on a weekend or holiday. 
If the 20th falls on a weekend or holiday, your return is due the next business day. You should know that you don't have to wait for the return due date to file. You can file early and you can schedule your payment up to the due date. In this next section, I will provide you with resources available for you on our website. Welcome to our website. There are a lot of different ways to get to the tax department website. I'm sure many of you are familiar with external search engines like Google, Bing, or Yahoo. You can save, then select a bookmark or your favorite. You can type www.tax.ny.gov in your address bar. There are several ways to find what you're looking for once you arrive on our website. You can navigate using our banner, menus, and home pages. You can type a keyword in the search box. You can use the site, site map in the footer. You can follow links that we provide you in reminders or sub subscription service emails. We automatically send you reminders that ask you to log in and review messages in your OLS account message center. To easily navigate to sales tax content, select businesses in the teal header. From the drop down menu on the left side, select the topic you're looking for, which in this case would be sales tax. Below sales tax, you can see other items such as sales tax web files, sales tax forms, filing sales tax rate, registering as a sales tax vendor, and our Welcome to New Vendor webpage. If you're ready to log in, under Online Services, select Account Login and Create Account Link. Or select Login in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Sales Tax Web File is also featured on our homepage year-round. We've also designed a Welcome New Vendor page just for new sales tax payers like you. If you haven't already received a welcome email with the link to this page, no worries. You can type welcome in the search tax box, your go-to place for information. Our top recommendations aren't ads as they would be in Google or Bing. We have placed the content you frequently search for right at the top so you don't have to scroll through search results. And we use the same term you use into the search box to be sure you can find what you're looking for by using those keywords. For example, if you're looking for sales tax guidance specifically for your salon, type salon. For troubleshooting, type troubleshooting. If you need self-help assistance with your username, type username into the search field. If you need to find the Business Answer Center, type FAQ. Here is our answer center. By the way, our answer center includes frequently asked questions suggested by our contact center and based on the type of questions you call about. You'll want to check the answer center first to save yourself a call if you have a question. If you, if you think we've missed something, let us know. There are feedback surveys in the footer of every application and for our website and our call center. You can use the search box on our website to assist you. Simply input the search term in the search box. Here are some keywords to help guide you. Demos are walkthrough videos that can assist you with different services on our website, such as how to create an online services account or how to file a no tax due return. To look for sales tax guidance written with you in mind, type bulletin or publication. Next, I will show you the tool that you can use to determine the sales tax rate for specific location or address. The tool that you use is the Jurisdiction Rate Lookup by Address. You can use this lookup to determine the sales tax rate for specific location or address. New York's retail sales tax is a destination tax. The point of delivery or the point at which possession is transferred by the seller to the purchaser determines the rate of tax to be collected. This means the rate can change depending on the location. There are various sales tax rate and various types of jurisdictions. The combined sales and use tax rate equals the 4% state rate plus any local tax rate imposed by a city, county, or school district. 
an additional sales tax rate of 0.375% applies to taxable sales made within the Metropolitan Commuter Transportation District, or some of you may know that as the MCTD, New York City and the counties of Dutchess, Nassau, Orange, Putnam, Rockland, Suffolk, and Westchester are in this district. The combined rates vary in each county and city that impose sales tax. Sales delivered outside New York State are exempt from tax. Since there are various types of jurisdictions, you can look them up here. So, how do you search for your jurisdiction rate? The first screen takes you to the security check. You enter the security code that is displayed. It will be different each time you access this page. When you've finished, select Continue. Now, you are on the Jurisdiction Rate Lookup by Address screen. Make sure you look at the instruction links. On this page, you will select the Sales Tax Jurisdiction and Rate drop-down option. This is a tool you can use to find out what sales tax rate to charge your customer. The lookup provides the combined state and local sales tax rate, proper jurisdiction, and jurisdiction code for an address, and the sales tax jurisdiction, jurisdiction code, and tax rate on sales or purchases of utilities. Next, select lookup address and enter the street address and zip code. Once you have entered the address, a date of transaction field will populate. The date of the sale is important because tax rates can change. In the sales tax detail section, you'll be able to see the tax taxing jurisdiction based on the address that you provided. This information is important for when you add specific jurisdictions to your quarterly sales tax return. Remember, this rate is based on where the product or service was sold or delivered. On the right-hand side, you will see the tax rate you collect on behalf of New York State and remit with your return. Again, remember, this rate is based on where the product or service was sold or delivered. For example, if your customer walks into your store and purchases a product, your physical location is Albany, you would charge them Albany County sales tax rate. When your customer comes into the store, purchases a product, and wants it delivered to Saratoga County, you would charge the sales tax rate for Saratoga County because that is where the product is being delivered. Now that I have covered the basic navigation techniques of the Department of Taxation and Finance's website, and talked about determining the amount of tax you need to collect, I will show you how to create a business online services account. Located in the top right corner of the homepage, you'll see a Create Account link. Select this to move forward. You will arrive at this page, Create an Online Services Account. You can see here there are sections that you can expand to expand for more information. Choose the account type that fits your needs. Gather the information necessary to create your account and choose a username and password you will remember. When you are ready to create your account, select business. All sales tax vendors need to create a business account, even if you're a sole proprietor. Remember, individual accounts are for personal income tax returns and don't provide access to the sales tax web file options. Enter the security code in the box and select continue. Now that you are on the business account creation page, we will ask you what type of access you'd like for your account. All available services is the most common type of account for sales tax filers. This grants you access to all services, allows you to view and pay bills, file your returns online, and allows us to communicate with you. Choosing the only view and pay bills option will not let you file and pay your sales tax return and will not let you receive sales tax filing reminders from us. 
After selecting all available services, you'll be asked if you received a five-digit PIN. We mailed this PIN to you shortly after your Certificate of Authority to collect sales tax was approved. This PIN is only good for 90 days. When finished, select Continue. If you don't have a PIN, we will need to verify your identity with additional questions. Now, I am going to move forward as if you do have our five-digit PIN. On the business verification page, you must enter your taxpayer ID number. You can find this on your certificate of authority. When you're inputting the information, don't include any dashes or spaces. Then enter your five-digit PIN and select Continue. At this point, you will be asked to provide your contact information, your name, your email address, and your phone number. You will be asked to create a username and password. Once you've completed this step, more than likely your computer or web browser is going to ask you if you'd like to have your computer save your username and password. Select No. Next, I will provide you with some helpful hints to avoid some common issues. In this example, your online services account is already created and you have clicked on, login, on the login link on the www.tax.ny.gov homepage in the top right-hand corner. Once you've selected login, you'll be directed to this page to enter your username and password, then select sign in. If you forgot your username and password, use the forgot your username or password links found on the login homepage. Remember, do not bookmark this page. How do you know you are logged in? You want to make sure you're creating and logging into a business online services account and not a personal account. You can verify that you are in the correct account by looking at the name and ID number in the parentheses of your account summary page. As you can see here in the example, it states ABC Corporation. A business account will show your legal business name, which for a sole proprietor will be your personal name followed by your taxpayer ID for that business. A, ta a personal account will show your social security number and you won't have access to the sales tax web file options that we're about to show you. As you can see here, Jane Doe is a personal account. You must make sure that you are creating and logged into your business online services account. Some people may have more than one online services account. One may be for personal use, the other for business. If you find you have logged into the wrong account, you'll need to fully log out of those credentials and then open a new window. To log out of the account, click on your name in the top right corner. The last option in the dropdown will be Log Out. Once the logout is complete, close the browser window and open a new browser window. Don't click on any saved favorite website links. Remember, logging out is very important, so please remember to do so. It's important for many reasons, primarily because it protects your information. If you don't know how to switch your web page to private browsing, I will show you how now. If you're having trouble creating your business online services account or with logging in, try this. You can switch the web page into private browsing mode by following the instructions for the browser you're using. As you can see we, here, we provide instructions based on your browser, whether it's Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome. Please note there are no hotkeys for Safari. In this next segment, I will cover how to navigate the account summary page. This is the home page you see once you have logged into your business account. When you first log into your account, the main page will display account messages. 
This is where you can see confirmation of previous filings, reminders for upcoming filings, and notifications of delinquent filings. In the right top corner, you'll see your name. If you select that, a drop-down menu will appear. This user's name, for example, is Jane Smith. Once the drop-down populates, you'll see the logout option listed last. If you accidentally created a view and pay bills only account, you can delete that account by clicking on the link in the drop-down menu. If you need to update your personal contact information, you can do so here. You can set up your email notification preferences by selecting electronic communications under preferences. If you see that, you'll see the next page. Now you sign up to receive electronic communications. You can choose to sign up for emails about your bills and related notices or about filings, payments, and account adjustments. If you choose to do this, you will no longer receive these communications via physical mail. Once you've decided which notifications you'd like to receive, select Save. In this next segment, I will show you how to file your sales tax return. First, today you are not seeing a full filing. Since you're not seeing a full filing, I encourage you to check out our full-length demos for more information. What you do is you go to www.tax.ny.gov. Remember I showed you the search button earlier. In that search box, you enter demos. You will be able to find the following demos. We have a demo on jurisdictional credits. We have a demo on if you're filing as a one schedule or if you have a no tax due return. Some of you may have no tax due. We have a demo on that as well. So how do you begin your sales tax filing? You already learned how to log into your online services account. Once you are in your online services account, select the services icon. A side panel will then open for you to make a selection. Once you are in the services menu, select sales tax, file, and pay. Then under the sales tax, file, and pay, you select sales tax web file. A tip for you is that on the top of every page within sales tax web file, there are instructions about the current page. There are also links that open to instructional pages to provide you with more information. As you can see here, you can select Sales Tax Information Center or Sales Tax Return if you need to get more information. Another tip to help you when you're filing your sales tax return is that next to almost every field, there are green instructional tags or iTags to select for more guidance. As you can see here, let's say you didn't know what gross sales meant you could select the I tag next to gross sales. In the box, there is an explanation of gross sales, which includes all taxable, non-taxable, and exempt sales made during the reporting period. In the box, you're instructed not to include sales tax when computing gross sales. You can then click on the instructional links for more information. Next, to continue with your filing and to enter your taxable sales, in the correct jurisdiction, select the main form link. As you can see, there is a red circle with the line through it, which indicates that the main form has not yet been completed. On the next page, page you will be instructed to add a jurisdiction. Earlier, I spoke about jurisdictions being the counties, cities, or school districts that you do business in. The section headed Jurisdiction Summary will list jurisdictions for which you have filed in the past. Since you have not previously filed, you will add a new jurisdiction by choosing it from the drop-down menu and selecting Add. 
Next, you will add a jurisdiction for which each area that you make sales in. If you have more than one, you will need to add each jurisdiction one by one. As you can see here, some jurisdictions are cities or even New York State only. You'll use the jurisdiction that applies to you and select Add. For this example, we've chosen Albany County. Now that we know how to add a jurisdiction, I will show you how to open each row to input your sales tax information for the liability period. Going forward, the jurisdiction that you have selected will be saved and displayed for future filings. Let's say you no longer conducted business in a certain area or you're conducting business in a new area. You can add or delete if needed. To remove a jurisdiction, check the corresponding box to the left of its name and select Remove. Now you will add your sales information to the jurisdiction. You may select anywhere within the jurisdiction row. By doing so, that row will change color. New fields will open with taxable sales, credits against taxable sales, purchases, and credits against purchases. Enter the information that applies to you. For more information about credits, select the green buttons, which we referred to before as iTags. Now that you have completed entering your information, you will select Calculate. Now that you're done calculating, you will see the totals. To continue with your filing, select Continue. Remember, when we started, there was a red circle that I showed you because the main form was not yet completed. Now there is a green check mark to indicate that the main form has been completed. This does not mean that your return has been filed. It is important to select Continue. You will need to remember that your main form has been completed, but you still need to pay and submit. How do you pay? You will need to pay the tax due from your checking account. Select account type. We recommend you use a business checking account. If you choose, you can save your account information for the next time you file and pay. When you've finished, select Continue. Now you are able to review that all your information is correct. If you need to make any changes, select Edit. Once you've verified your filing information and payment details, so here you'd be verifying the payment method, the bank name, the bank routing number, the account type, all of the information is correct. Once, it, once it's correct, select Submit. This will bring you to the Transaction Confirmation page. This is where you will find your confirmation number, as you can see in the highlighted box. You may print a copy of this page for your records by selecting Print. You may also print or save a PDF copy of your filing by selecting View Print Forms. Should you have an issue trying to print your return after you submit it, don't worry. You can always come back at a later date and print one from your online services account summaries page. I will show you how. Under your account summary, select the web file confirmation email under the account messages section. In this case, you are selecting the one for the date you just filed. So as you can see here, there are various dates used as an example, but you would use the date that is applicable to you. Now a pop-up with limited filing details such as taxpayer ID, confirmation number, and other information will display. Select View to see a printable version of your return. Another way to print a copy of your sales tax return is in the 
Filing and payment section. In this section, select sales tax. Now that you have selected sales tax, remember your ST100 is your quarterly sales tax filing form. Select the row next to the ST100, which will display a link. By selecting that link, you can view or print. Your account summary will display the last five periods. So what are some tips for successfully filing your return? Utilize the instructional links on the top of every page. When in doubt, utilize the instructional links on the top of every page. When in doubt, select the I tags next to all applicable fields. Gross sales is all taxable, non-taxable, and exempt sales made from your New York State location and from your locations outside of New York State delivered into the state. Remember, for New York State sales tax purposes, it's all about location, location, location. Gross sales should not include the sales tax you collect. Be sure to select the main form link on the return summary to enter your taxable sales. Make sure you report taxable sales on the jurisdiction where each sale was made. Remember, sales tax is a destination tax. It's okay to print before you submit, but make sure you submit afterwards. Hit the submit button. How do you know you have successfully submitted your filing? You'll receive a confirmation number that starts with SW. For example, here there's SW followed by the number. Thank you everyone for participating in our How to File Your Sales Tax Return webinar. I really hope that you found this webinar useful. Thank you again and please remember to complete the survey that you will be directed to at the conclusion of this webinar.